Shalom. First and foremost, before I get started, as always, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash, and next double honors to the head apostles slash elder bishops of the great millstone who teach and who rule well. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere Akim. Keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith, regardless of whether people hear and whether they forbear. All right, and this lesson is going to be entitled, We Are Lively Stones built up a spiritual house to offer up sacrifices unto the Lord all right pretty much going into how in today's time all right we don't we obviously don't have a temple and, and you know animal sacrifice was done away with but we are that temple all right we are that spiritual house he dwells within us all right the Heavenly Father and how we offer spiritual sacrifices through our works our righteousness all right that is given to us by the faith in Yahweh Shai okay so with that being said, we're going to go ahead and jump right into the scriptures. All right, I'm going to start here in the book of 1 Peter, the second chapter. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start from the top at verse 1. And it reads, it says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desiring the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby, if so be that ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of the Most High and precious. Okay, so Yahweh Shai, uh, he's that precious cornerstone, the one that was rejected, all right, but he's chosen of the Most High and precious. Okay, the same way that we are rejected of men, all right, but we are part of that spiritual body of Yahweh Shai, which was ordained from the beginning of the foundation of the earth. It says, 1 Peter 2 and 5, it says, Ye also, as lively stones, are built up in spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to Most High Yahweh by Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. All right. So as the title of the video states, okay, now we offer up spiritual sacrifices. And right, how do we do that? Through our obedience. All right. Through our good works. Okay. That's how we show the Lord that we love Him. All right. That we honor. Okay. We cherish. All these things, all right? Every time we are obedient and uh, rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord, we're offering up spiritual sacrifices, okay? But don't take it from me. Let's go ahead and read it straight out of the scriptures. All right, let's go to Isaiah, the 19th chapter. And I'm going to start at verse 19. And it reads, it says, In that day shall there be an altar to Yahweh in the midst of the land of Egypt, and a pillar at the border thereof, to Yahweh, okay and what is an altar an altar in the old covenant was a place where they offered up sacrifices all right blood sacrifices animals goats lambs calves okay doves whatever it was all right but obviously we don't have that okay in today's time where we at we are in spiritual Sodom and Egypt according to the prophecies found in Revelation 11 all right 11 8 on down okay we are in the land of spiritual Sodom and Egypt the place of our redemption, the place that we would wake up and have the great uprising, which today is known of as America, the daughter of Babylon or Babylon the Great. Okay, and I'm not going to go too much into it, but the reason why this place is known of as spiritual Sodom in Egypt is because spiritual Sodom, because of sexual perverseness, are the same activities that were being partook of in ancient Sodom and Gomorrah are, saying, are being partaken of here today. All right, and we are likened, two thirds of our people are likened unto Sodom and Gomorrah. All right. So this is spiritual Sodom and a spiritual Egypt. Why? Because, OK, if you go and you type in house of bondage. All right. You'll see that Egypt is constantly associated with the house of bondage, the land of captivity. Deuteronomy five and six. I am the Lord, your power, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. All right. And that same uh, phrase is used constantly, and repeatedly to refer to ancient Egypt all right but we are in spiritual Egypt okay so we go back to this prophecy oh excuse me Isaiah the 19th chapter we go back to the prophecy all right which prophecy it has uh hidden meanings and everything is written in code the majority of the time all right and it's done this way on purpose okay how I told us in Mark 4 and 12 all right, he told us that unto you are the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven given but unto them they are not given so all these things are written in parables all right. This is Isaiah 19 and 19. And in that day shall there be an altar to Yahweh in the midst of the land of Egypt and a pillar at the border thereof 
to the Most High Yahweh. All right, and that altar is talking about us. Okay, we are the spiritual temple, offering up those sacrifices, and it should be for, it should be for a sign and for a witness unto Yahweh, power of hosts in the land of Egypt, for they shall cry unto the Most High Yahweh because of the oppressors, and He shall send them a savior and a great one, and He shall deliver them. All right, so that's where we are right now. We're here in the house of bondage, spiritual Sodom and Egypt. All right, we're crying to Yahweh Bashem Yahushai because of the hand of our oppressors. All right, Esau, Edom, the so-called white man, the sons of the Grecians, all right, the ones that are holding, uh, that are our taskmasters and have a hold of us in this present time, okay? It says, and he shall send them a savior and a great one, and he shall deliver them. Once again, Yahweh Shai, who the word angrily calls Jesus. Verse 21, and the Lord shall be known to Egypt, and the Egyptians shall know the Lord in that day, and shall do sacrifice and oblation. Yea, they shall vow a vow unto the Most High Yahweh, and perform it. Okay, so once again, we don't have physical a physical temple to offer up sacrifice, and we also know, according to Hebrews the tenth chapter, that uh, Yahweh Shai, he did away with sacrifice. He was the final uh, sacrifice of blood forever. All right, we don't have to sacrifice animals anymore. So what is it talking about? Right here, when it's talking about the deliverance of the Israelites out of Sodom, uh, spiritual Sodom and Egypt, okay, what sacrifice is it talking about? It's talking about us presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice. All right, let's get that right quick. Romans chapter 12, and I'm going to start at verse 1 and just read verses 1 and 2. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, I beseech you, meaning I beg of you, by the mercies of the Most High Yahweh. Why? Because it's only of his mercy that we even have an opportunity to be reconciled unto him. He could have easily left us in this fallen state and left us in the hand of our enemies forever. But it's of his mercy that he's given us a chance to be redeemed. It says that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. Okay, so the sacrifice that's spoken of in Isaiah 19 is talking about us presenting our bodies a living sacrifice. All right, the temple was within us. Okay, so what we do within our spirit is a sacrifice unto the Lord. Okay, Romans 12 and 2, it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High Yahweh. All right. So, okay, he says what? He says, Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Most High. Okay, so how do we do that? We do that through obedience. This was spoken of to the prophet and King Samuel. All right. But it applies to us as well. All right. As we're coming in that same stead, the righteous lineage. This is first Samuel 15 and 22. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord, Yahweh? Behold, I mean, to pay attention to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. Okay, so our obedience, that is the living sacrifice that we present unto Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, all right? Pleasant and holy in his sight, Lord's will. Let's get into the precept on that. Proverbs chapter 21 and verse three. It says, to do justice and judgment is more acceptable to Yahweh than sacrifice, okay? And how do we do justice and judgment? Okay, by following the ways that he set before us, all of his judgments. Are we following that path? He didn't he didn't leave us the laws, the statutes, the commandments for no reason. All right, he wants us to execute them to the best of our ability. All right, and that's what we're going to do according to Judges 5 and 11. We're going to rehearse the righteous acts. All right. So we offer up sacrifice through our righteous works and through our obedience. All right, let's get a few more precepts and get ready to wrap it up. Okay, just something quick. All right, a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of early morning, early morning bread. All right. It's a Psalm chapter four. And I'm going to start at verse two. It says, O ye sons of men, how long will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love vanity and seek after leasing? Say la. All right. So it's a call out to the sons of men, specifically the Israelites. That's who it's referring to. Okay. Because the Lord is only dealing with the Israelites. It says, how long? Will you turn my glory into shame? All right. Why? Because the daughter of Zion was once the glory of the Heavenly Father, as it tells us in the scriptures that a wife is the glory of her husband. Okay. How long will you love vanity and seek after leasing? Say, La. 
Verse 3, but know that the Most High Yahweh has set apart him that is godly for himself. Yahweh will hear when I call unto him. Verse 4, stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Salah. This is the point right here. Psalms 4 and 5. It says, offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. And when you see Lord, all caps, that's Yahweh. All right. Offer, I'm, I'm going to click on it. Let's read it again. Emphasis right here. Psalms 4 and 5. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in Yahweh. All right. That's fire. Okay. And when we do this, that's when he is going to bring us that deliverance as we read in Isaiah 19. And we'll close out with this. This is Malachi chapter 3 and verse 1. It says, Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord, whom ye seek, shall suddenly come to his temple, and who is his temple to Israelites. Even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, saith Yahweh, power of host. Okay, so when he comes, what is it going to come with? He's going to come with fire and with sword. And that's why it says in the next verse, But who may abide the day of his coming? Who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, all right, which the, the elect men are likened unto fine gold. All right, he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi. Okay, now, it's not just the sons of Levi, it's all the Israelites, okay? But going back to the Levitical priesthood, Okay, the Levites, they were the ones who were able to offer uh, animal sacrifice unto the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Okay, now, all right, under Yahweh Shai, uh, we all are able to offer spiritual sacrifice. Okay, all of the Israelites, specifically the men of the elect. It says, he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver. Okay, so we are playing in that role of Levi in this spiritual temple. Okay, we are able to offer up these spiritual sacrifices by, through, through our righteousness, through our obedience, all right, it says, and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Let's run that back. Malachi 3 and 3. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi, which we're all playing in that role today, and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer unto Yahweh an offering in righteousness. Okay, that's what we are to be doing. Okay, we're not supposed to be using this grace period as a cloak for maliciousness. All right, we're supposed to be using this grace period uh, and our, our liberty, our freedom, okay, to, to offer up these spiritual sacrifices of obedience to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right, okay, verse 4, Malachi 3 and 4, it says, And then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Most High, as in the days of old, as in, in former years, which is why he's going to send his Savior Yahweh Shai to gather his bride, deliver his elect. All right, Malachi 3 and 5, And I will come near to you to judgment. And I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against the false swearers and against those that oppress the hireling in his wages, the widow and the fatherless, and that turn aside the stranger from his right, that fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts. All right. And who is guilty of all these offenses that is spoken of here? Esau, Edom, the so-called white man. OK, and I can actually I could get the precepts on all of these where it, it says that he's guilty, but I'm not going to do that. Unless you want me to, if you do, put me, put in the comment board and I'll get the precepts on that uh, Malachi 3 and 5, uh, connecting all those sins to Esau, Edom. All right. But, OK, it says that once again, that that offering of Judah and Jerusalem, the southern kingdom, and the northern kingdom, all 12 tribes, okay, the southern kingdom being the so-called black tribes, so-called Negro tribes in the northern kingdom, Jerusalem being the so-called uh, native tribes or indigenous tribes, excuse me, Latinos, and Native American Indians. Okay, that, that sacrifice, that offering of righteousness shall be pleasant unto the Lord as in the days of old, all right, and as in the former years. And then he's going to bring that judgment and he's going to execute justice and judgment for his elect and deliver us from this final captivity by the hands of that mighty Savior, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, all right? And that's what we're looking forward to. This is the role of the elect, all right? So we must offer up these spiritual sacrifices unto Yahweh Bashmi Shai to the best of our ability and prepare for deliverance. Okay, so I'm gonna close out with that. Lord's will was edifying as always. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. And until next time, Shalom and abide with ball.